Hello and welcome to Crosshairs Television. Today we are at Virginia's Blue Ridge Go Cross Race presented by Deschutes Brewery for the Men's Elite Saturday Race. We're at Fallon Park in Roanoke, Virginia, and the day started hot and humid, and then the thunderstorms rolled in, making a fast racetrack a little more challenging in the now slick turns. With the changing conditions, the field went through an early season panic as everyone scrambled to switch from file treads to a more aggressive tire. Tobin Ortenblad, Kerry Warner, and Jack Kisberth enter the race as favorites, but Tristan Cowie, Scott Smith, Troy Wells, and Belgian's Jorben Van Tickle didn't show up not to win. And we are off, and at the start it's Cowie taking the whole shot as the field enters the track and heads to the stairs. Kisseperth in his new Garno Easton kit, Orton Blood and Werner slot in behind. A half lap later, the field is on the backside ridge line and it's raining hard. Kisseperth now leads and his pace has left a gap after the top eight. The field enters the short mountain bike style wooded section and then drops into a tape farm below. At the stairs, Kisseperth still leads with Ortenblad Smith, Eric Thompson, and Werner behind. Moving to the picturesque front of the track, Ortenblad leads a sizable train. This part of the venue is a permanent cyclocross track in Fallon Park. A fun feature on the course is a triple set of downhill logs followed by an identical uphill set. No dismount needed, so the new UCI artificial barrier rule doesn't apply. Here we see Kerry putting in an effort and he now leads the race. Kerry's attempt to get away is decoupled the front four from the rest of the field. Werner, Kisseperth, Ortenblatt, and Cowie are your leading group. The slightly uphill sand section is not a factor for this field, especially with the rain compacting the pit. Wells, Thompson, Cody Kaiser, and Van Tickle lead the chase. Back at the log U and the top four remains the same with Werner still leading. As we see our leaders, they are now on the course's only flyover that comes about three turns from the finish. Cowie now leads with Ortenblad, Werner, and Kisseberth in tow. Six laps to go. Leaders and chasers remain the same, with Kaiser doing the work to close the gap. After the logs is a fast off-camber descent. This is a spot that went from innocuous to treacherous following the rain. With the long straights and 180 turns, leaders and chasers can take stock of each other.
Back at the stairs and Cowie leads. Tickle leads to chasers. Here's a look at the woods. It's a fun section which stayed dry during the rain and really wasn't a factor for this race. Out of the tape farm and Tobin is making everyone work. He keeps at it for the remainder of the lap. Van Tickled and Thompson now together chase behind. A lap later, Kisaperth attacks and has gapped the other three. He keeps the pressure on as the group heads to the sand. Werner begins to crawl his way back with Tobin on his wheel. By the logs, they are back, with Cowie doing all he can to hang on. Moments later, Carrie has taken over at the front. At the sand, Carrie remains in front with Kisseberth and Ortenblad behind. Cowie has fallen off the pace, but still is fighting. And by the U, there he is. He's found his way back. Over the flyover and no change in our top four. One lap to go. Through the sand, the group is together, and this is shaping up for a sprint finish. Werner controls the pace through the final turns.
and here they come. All together, down the stretch, Werner and Kisberth get the jump, and with a final push just at the end, it's Werner taking it by a mere inches. Kerry Werner, your winner, day one, go cross. Pretty much four guys, whole race. Yeah. Did you try? Did you try to stretch it out at all? Two laps in. Two laps in, but I mean, just like not quite enough. A little too many, too many corners. And uh, yeah, these guys are like we all ride pretty similar on the technical stuff. So, so with, it, was, it was about fitness. And, oh man, I know. I tried to hold Tobin off because I knew he was going to be ripping on the last lap. He didn't do too much effort. Nice ride by Jack. I mean, he was sort of setting the pace out there. Jack was riding really well. He did an attack into the woods and whew, blew everybody's doors off. Uh, you came out here last night, did a lot of laps yesterday afternoon. It was bone dry. Yeah. Get out there. It was a huge deluge. How did that change things? How did it change the course? Yeah, I mean... Uh, some of the corners were actually nicer. They were a bit tacky. Some of them were slippy, so it was, you had to stay on your toes quite a bit out there. And I mean, like, stuff kind of changed throughout the race because we started in a drizzle and then it stopped, so everything was kind of changing. Different lines every lap. So. When you saw this on the schedule, you know, September 1, early race, did you think it was going to be such a, such a strong field? I didn't. I was... I was looking forward to just kind of walking into this with an easy race, but yeah, then I heard Tobin was coming, and I think a lot of guys wanted to get a race out of the way before the first C1, and that was my plan. So, Plus, like, I'm just two hours south of here, so yeah, it was pretty nice. So attack from the gun tomorrow? Oh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. <laughs> Mr. Kerry Warner, ladies and gentlemen. Kerry Warner.